The Fabulous 50s and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my wife, Janetta, and today we're going to talk about a brand new program available for grandparents who are taking care of their grandchildren. You stay tuned and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race, keep your own pace, keep moving and never stop. Just go, go, hey, go with what you got. Welcome back. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my wife, Jeanette, and our guest today is Nancy Harper. And Nancy's going to explain to us the brand new Kentucky Caregiver Support Program that has to do with grandparents. Uh, and it's brand new, I guess, uh, within the last couple of months, mm -hmm. and it's funded, and you're looking for grandparents to help. So you're going to have to tell us how the program works so that our viewers will know. Okay. Well, thank you for inviting me to your show. Um, it is a brand new state-funded program. It's for Kentucky grandparents of any age who are raising their grandchildren in their home. The grandchildren need to be 18 years old or younger. And um, one thing where the state guidelines are that they need to be the primary caregiver, uh, be related to the grandchild by birth, marriage, or if the grandparent happened to adopt the parent. And um, the also, um, if a grandparent is receiving kinship care, they are not able to apply for this program. Um, this is different from KTAP. If they are receiving KTAP for their grandchild, they can apply. But if they are receiving kinship care payments, then they're not eligible for this particular program. There's also uh, income guidelines that the state has provided um, us to use. And it, the income cannot exceed 150% of federal poverty guidelines. So what that translates into is like for a family of four, the yearly income cannot be more than $30,000. Uh, one of the questions that, that we have that I've had asked me is, mm -hmm. if they have legally adopted the child, are mm -hmm. they still eligible? That's a very good question. Um, and unfortunately, how this, the state did write the guidelines is that if the grandparent did adopt the grandchild, then they are now considered their son and daughter. So they would not be eligible for this program. All right, what if they are their legal guardian? Legal guardian is fine. Um, part of the application process is that they have to provide us with documents of, of their relationship to their grandchild, such as guardianship papers or custody papers. Uh, we also need proof of income for the household and also proof that they live in Kentucky because our state borders so many states uh, that we that the state wanted us to be sure that we were providing the services to the Kentucky grandparents. Okay. Um, what is the amount of grant or is it a... It, you know, this is a question they go to ask. Is it a cash mm -hmm. grant or is it an in-kind grant or... How, what is it and how is it distributed? Okay, um, once the, the application has been completed with the grandparent and we're able to process it, then we schedule a home visit and come out and do a very short assessment. And at that time, we talk to the grandparent about what their grandchildren need. And it is not a money payment, it's basically uh, discussion about what items would they like for their grandchildren and we have various vendors or stores in our local area that we can go with the grandparents so they can select clothing, shoes, socks, underwear if the grandchild is in need of furniture for their bedroom, beds, mattresses, uh, things of those nature then we're able to be with the parent, grandparent get those items and the program pays for those items. Well that that's very good isn't it? You know I mean yes. every little bit helps out when you're it does. sometimes they're they're on a low income and then they have children to take care of. 
I think for me personally, um, it has been a, a very eye-opening experience. I really didn't realize the large numbers of grandparents who are now raising their grandchildren. Um, a lot of reasons why they're doing it is perhaps the, the parents of the children were killed in car right. accident or they had an illness that took them away or perhaps they're unfortunately in jail or in drugs and they've had to step in and take care of their grandchildren at an age when they were right. thinking about you know taking vacations and being on their own and thinking their child rearing was completed we had friends in Florida. We lived in Florida for 23 years, and we had friends in Florida who at, what, 65, wasn't it? I think they were. Maybe they, a little older. And they were taking their great-granddaughter. Oh, gosh. Yes. Now, now, we have had some great-grandparents to call, and they can also apply. Oh, they can apply. They can. We've had some great-grandparents who are taking care of their great-grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they can also apply for this program as well. But, you know, that's just, I mean, I can't imagine at this stage of my life trying to raise a two-year-old, you know, know, because to keep up with them is, I but, but I admire them so much I had, for doing it. I had a lady who was in her upper 70s, and she called, and she said, I'm raising my great-grandchild who is three or four years old, and <laughs> she was talking about, you know, how she came about and all that, and I said, you're my hero for the day because That's right. I don't think I could take care of a young one um, at that age. So there's a lot of good-hearted people who are taking care of these children who need a home yeah. and love. And they need a home and love, and they, they, they do need that uh, relationship between a relative, mm -hmm. you know, because there's just that, that bonding that would come from that that wouldn't come necessarily from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, it, 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 there are a tremendous number of people who are doing that today. There are, and I think uh, <coughs> there, with that number, this bill was truly a grassroots type of bill that came to pass. It was a very it was very strong and active grandparent support group up in central northern part of Kentucky. And they found their representative and said, hey, we need help. Uh, we're taking care of children that we didn't think we were going to, and it's expensive to take care of children these mm -hmm. days, and we need help. And so due to that grassroots um, endeavor, this bill was introduced to the Kentucky legislature and passed and funded for this fiscal year and for the next fiscal year, which starts July 1. So it, it, it's already funded them for two years. Yes. Do you have many participants in this area currently? Yes. We have had um, a phenomenal amount of calls. Um, we have had a lot of our family resource centers in our school systems have been very good about identifying and getting the information out to the grandparents and the school systems. We've also had a lot of support from our local health departments, our local community-based services agencies, a lot of social workers out there who say, okay, I've got grandparents, they need to call you. And I guess at this date, we probably have had over a hundred telephone calls just to get information and get applications sent out. Well, see, Vicki emailed me. Mm -hmm. uh, she emails me of the new programs mm -hmm. and she'll always say, Jim, you ought to have this one on your program. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh, so we, we try to keep up with what's happening. Mm -hmm. She knows what we look for. It's things that relate to people 50 and older. Mm -hmm. And so she emailed me and said, we ought to try to have this on. So uh, we did and, and we're glad we did. You know, this is something that needs to be known. And uh, we have an audience out there and I said, it's interesting, we go out in places and people say I watch every week and I, mm -hmm. and that thrills us you know to know that right. that they are out there and they're watching right. and, and, and listening and paying attention to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well we're going to take a break mm -hmm. and uh, during this break Jeanette and Pam are going to get together. Pam is our registered uh, nutritionist and they're going to talk about nutrition. I try to stay out of their way when they do that because <laughs> I, I, my nutrition doesn't always agree with Pam's. So you stay tuned and we'll be right back.
welcome Pam Ward today. She's a registered dietitian at Western Baptist Hospital, and she comes to share each week with us about nutrition and some of the health things that we need to know. Welcome, Pam. Well, I'm glad to be here. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about iron. Uh, you know, we frequently see people that are anemic and they just know they feel bad, but they don't know quite what the, what the problem is. And the symptoms for uh, iron deficiency and anemia are all over the board. And you can blame a lot of them on something else. Your appetite may decrease, uh, frequent headaches, pale skin, being very tired, you know, very lethargic, not sleeping well, all those type of things, but we can always pin those on something else. And so people don't tend to think about, oh, I might be anemic, I need to, need to go get my levels checked. So it's hard to diagnose, in other words. It is for the lay person. I mean, the lab value will diagnose it, boom. But we also, like I said, often we don't put the symptoms together and realize what it is. We just think we're overworked or, you know, we're not getting enough sleep, whatever it may be. But it can be anemia. Okay. And anemia is, you know, where your blood count goes Blood count down. goes down. Mm -hmm. um, iron primarily in the body functions as a carrier for oxygen. And so if there's not enough iron, the oxygen levels are low. And there comes that tiredness, that lethargy, that just, oh, I don't want to go, you know, I'm, I'm so tired. All that comes together. And most of us, uh, unless we're big red meat eaters, which that's a whole nother issue, right. you know, probably don't get enough iron. And because the American diet is so poor most of the time. But what I want to talk about this morning or today is just some good options as far as iron goes. There are two types of iron. There is heme iron and non-heme iron. Okay, Heme iron is found only in basically meat products, meat, fish, poultry, but it is much more readily absorbed than the non-heme iron. Your body use, utilizes it much faster and much better. Now the non-heme iron, uh, fruits, vegetables, dried beans, anything other than a meat product, it is still, still iron, but it's not absorbed nearly as well in the body. So it really comes from the red meat. Well, it does, but there mostly. are- Mostly. Mostly, but there are things you can do to help increase the absorption from the non-heme iron. Um, one thing is a good source of vitamin C with the meal will help. Um, and it can be just, you know, a glass of orange juice, grapefruit, tomatoes are high in vitamin C, broccoli is high in vitamin C, but all of those things, strawberries even, all of those things if taken in or eaten in conjunction with the non-heme iron food are gonna increase your absorption. And what about supplements? Supplements can be an option for a lot of people. Um, you know, preferably, honest, obviously, we like to see it come from diet because right. with with foods, it's hard to isolate just one item or one benefit. You know, you get all sorts of other benefits. But certainly, you can take you can take supplements. I would caution: don't take your cal if you take calcium, don't take your calcium supplement at the same time you take your iron supplement. Split the two up um, because it will, oh, I'm sorry, it will affect the absorption of the iron if you take your calcium supplement with okay, it. Okay, so they, they're not, they're not they together. don't go together. You know, it may be that you take one in the morning and you take one at night, but if you can spread them out, get some time between them, um, you'll do much better. And most of us, say 50 plus, we are aiming for 18 milligrams a day. And it's so poorly absorbed that if you get 18 milligrams, you, you're going to probably absorb less than two. And that's why the, the um, amount needed sounds, sounds so high, but it's just because it's poorly absorbed. And again, the heme iron, that from your red meats, it's gonna be much better absorbed than your non-heme iron. Um, you know, it's just, just how it works. We talked about you can drink the vitamin C or eat the vitamin C food with it. You also, if you will eat a non-heme food with a heme food, that will increase the absorption. You know, for example, if you eat red meat and you eat dried beans as part of that meal, the fact that you're eating the red meat is going to impact the absorption of the iron from the beans. The beans. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, if you can mix the two together, and something most people don't think about that you actually can do is cook in iron, an old cast iron skillet, a cast iron pot. Some of that iron will leach into the food while it's cooking, so it will increase 
the amount of iron in it. So, you know, if you've just got an old old iron skillet, it's a great way if you get things not to stick, but it's a great way to increase your iron uh, intake. Now, I always use an iron skillet. Do you? Yes, well, I do. I'm I that do. new, you know, mine's got to be Teflon coated and all and those good things. I just grew up with it, you know, and that's what I've always used. And if you spray it, it really doesn't stick. It does. It, and you're exactly right. It's a matter of what you're used to. Right. But switching to iron, especially if it's an issue for you as far as iron deficiency, could be a good idea. So iron, with a lack of iron, you feel like just very just, just tired? Just bad. I mean, appetite's down. Um, you just feel very tired. You can have headaches. Even like your nails will change. They'll become very thin, sort of brittle. Your hair will become very brittle. Um, so they're all kind of symptoms to look for, all kinds of signs to look for. Okay. Well, my nails have always been brittle. <laughs> well, you may need some more iron. <laughs> and you know, some of that type of thing is genetic. Yes. But it if it's a new, if your, if your nails have been fine and now suddenly you notice that. Um, well, they have never been fine. Then, so. then you're probably <laughs> safe. And th the one more thing I wanted to tell people is, and I didn't even know that, really think about this before. If you drink a large amount of tea or a large amount of coffee with a meal, it's going to very much decrease the absorption of the iron because a chemical in the tea and in the coffee basically binds to the iron so that your body doesn't absorb it. That's not good. No, that's not good. <laughs> well, our time is about up for today, Pam. Thank you so much for you're, sharing with you're us. You're very welcome. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week. I'll be here. Welcome back, I'm Jim Pollard with my wife Janetta and our guest today is Nancy Harper. And we're talking about a new grandparents program and uh, during the break, Nancy and I were talking about that she mentioned that it was 30,000 for a family of four. Mm -hmm. and over that, you don't qualify for this new program, but you have another program that they might qualify for. You wanna talk about that a little bit? I do. Uh, if they are over income, there is the National Family Caregiver Support Pro Program. This is uh, a federally funded program. It has mainly been used, uh, and the biggest part of the budget we do spend for people who are taking care of someone who's 60 years and older, but we can spend 10% of the budget for grandparents who are 55 years old, and that's the 55 is gonna start July 1, uh, 55 years old raising grandchildren. And there's no income guidelines, so those people who we find are over income, and if they're going to be 55 and older after July 1 of this year, then we can give them the application to fill out. Interesting that it becomes 55 July 1. Are they telling That's us that we're getting older younger? Or <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's interesting. Of course, I imagine that the boomers have something to do with that too because of the vast number mm -hmm. uh, in that demographic that uh, is over 55 now. Mm -hmm. The largest segment of the population mm -hmm. is over 50 now, so they tell us. But um, you, is this a flat amount or is it a graduated amount that they receive? It's uh, basically it is... Um, you know, determining what the grandchild needs and then going to a lot of our grandparents who've been through it has gone to one store and they've been able to get everything they've needed up to $750 and, and all that. Others, we've had to go to a couple places to get items. It just kind of depends on what the grandchild needs and where we can get the items. And so sometimes it's been one store we get everything and other times it's been you know, a couple of places. Uh, let's give them now, we should have done it in the first half, but I didn't do it. We need to give them how they can get in touch with you. And I know right. I know our director will put something up on the screen, but you okay. verbalize it for us. Okay. Um, we have a toll-free number so everyone can save on their long-distance phone calls. It's 1-877-352-5183. And since we, uh, our area is also Paducah, McCracken County, if anyone is living in Livingston County, like Smithland or Ledbetter, then uh, they are not considered the Purchase Area Development District. They're considered to be in the Penny Ryle Area Development District, and they have a person just like me 
uh, who is working this program and if you don't care I'd like to give them that okay. information so for those of you in Livingston County call 1-800-928-7233 and the person you need to talk to is Bruce Carver. Okay. Now, the pad number 270-251-6130 is good also, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And PAD is an acronym for Purchase Area Development District, but mm -hmm. that encompasses, is it eight counties, if I remember correctly? Eight counties. And let me look at the brochure to be sure. honest. I get uh Well, we know that Graves rattle. County and McCracken right. County. It's Ballard, Callaway, Carlisle, Fulton, Graves, Hickman, Marshall, and McCracken County. Right. So those are the areas that are under your jurisdiction, right. shall we say, right. and, uh, direction. Mm -hmm. And they, they can actually call that uh, 251 number or the mm -hmm. 800 number Yes. and uh, and get through it. Yeah, I know that, that PAD does have a um, 800 number. Uh, that that they can call. Mm -hmm. uh, as we as we see this, is there a limit to the number of people that you can have? Well, right now, um, the what happened this year with the Purchase Area Development District was that uh, the coordinator who was there left for another position, and I got hired in the middle of February. So our area has had a little bit of a delay getting the program out. So right now we're trying to desperately get applications out, everything collected and processed, and we're going to serve as many as we can. With the new fiscal year coming, starting after July 1 of this year, um, I believe the number that of grandchildren will be able to serve will be somewhere around 70 or maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, to be honest, I didn't bring my budget numbers for next year, but I believe if my memory serves, it will be that amount. Uh, is this a renewable program? If they're in this year, do they reapply next year, or is it like automatic renewable? No, they need to reapply every year. So if we get to them and get the shopping done before the end of June, then they can call us after July 1 and reapply again. I'm hoping it will be a shorter application process for them is mm -hmm. what I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Well, you will have done a lot of research. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm hoping, I'm telling the grandparents that we're serving this fiscal year, I'm hoping to have a little bit more of a variety of stores for them for next year. Okay. Um, I was just looking at some of the notes that, that you sent to me, and this is one thing that we didn't talk about, said the grandparent and the grandchildren should be living in the same household on a full-time basis, but the parent of the child cannot be living in the household. That's correct, and uh, I've run into that. You know, people are taking care of their children and then their grandchildren. If the parent of the grandchild is living in the home, they're not eligible for this. Uh, and what I meant by full-time is that they're living in the same household as a grandparent. Right, right. I had someone to call and say, well, I have someone who lives with me some of the time and not of the time, so that's how come I put that to define it a little bit more clearly for people. Okay. Um, and it, and it is just for grandparents. We, we discussed is. this. There's aunts and uncles taking care of children, but... There are. I've had some calls from aunts and uncles who are taking care of nieces and nephews, and I am sorry this program was not written for that specific population. Uh, the only thing I could su suggest is that they contact their legislature and their representatives and say, we, we are we a group this. here too, and we would like to have the same opportunity as the Kentucky Grandparents Program. What about the federal program? The federal, I'm sorry, it's the, it's the same thing. It needs to be grandparents who are 55. Now, if, they, if anyone is taking care of someone who's 60 years and older who's providing care to them, uh, they can, they may be eligible for this national family mm -hmm. caregiver support program. Okay. Uh, is there, 
a, a limit to the grant on the night federal program? There's, um, well, the person doesn't have to have any, there's no income guidelines. It's traditionally been a first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. And basically when we get the budget uh, from the government, then we determine how many clients will be able to serve for that year. So there is a limit. So it is, it is your uh, determination as to amounts and people served and things like that on the, a local level. Right. This year we've been able to <coughs> provide up to $250 of services per caregiver. So that, um, and that doesn't seem like a lot. However, it has helped a lot of caregivers buy uh, nutritional supplements, um, things that they need like Depends, uh, things of that nature to helps lessen the the stress that they have as being a full-time caregiver uh, so that they can continue caring for that family member. All right, let's quickly go over the basic requirements because okay. we're about out of time. If, okay. if we, um, yeah, I'll just let you go over them. Since. Okay, <laughs> all right. One, be a Kentucky resident, be a primary caregiver for grandchildren who are age 18 years or under, be related to the grandchild by birth, marriage, or if you adopted the parent. If you adopted the grandchildren, you're not eligible for this program. If you are receiving kinship care, you're not eligible for this program. The grandchild must be residing in the same household as you. However, the parent cannot be residing in the same household. There are income guidelines for a family size of four. The annual income cannot exceed $30,000. And if someone just wants to call to get more specific about their family size, they can. We do require documentation of income, residency, relationship to the child, and there are also consent forms that have to be signed as well. Okay. Well, Nancy, we appreciate you being with us today. This is a new program and a lot of information in a short period of time. And we hope that our audience out there, if there's a grandparent out there that's raising a grandchild, this is for you. And we want you to look into this and see if you might benefit from it. You can call Nancy. Mm -hmm. The 800 number is again. Is 1-877-352-5183. Okay, and if you live in the uh, Mayfield area, you can dial 270-251-6130. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's Nancy Harper. She's uh, in charge of this program and we encourage you to take part in it. We encourage you to watch our program every week. We try to inform you of what's available and we'll inspire you with some of our guests as to what they're doing. And then we want you to, we want to motivate you to get up and go out and do something. Mm -hmm. And so you do that, you can uh, reach us online and you can also have this sh with the shows now being streamed at paducah2.org. You can download it or you can watch it on your computer if you would like to see it again and that's a way that our guests can get the program also Nancy mm, okay. and so we encourage you to do that. Uh, Janetta give me our address. P.O. Box 7, Bowes, Kentucky 42027. Remember use it or lose it. Can't see as well as I used to Can't run as far or as fast Sometimes I think that the old me Is becoming exactly